You know what you may not know is that you prophesied to, to Robin about a sack of potatoes. First thing that hit my mind when you said that last night, she had just bought a sack of uh, sweet potatoes and set them up on the counter before we walked out the door. And so that's the first thing I saw in my mind. And they were sweet potatoes. Well, <laughs> so it's going to turn out sweet, this whole thing. May all our potatoes be sweet. You know, you, <laughs> you're talking about Kuwaiti, Egyptian, Australian. Well, this is, you're an Alabamian now. And we have a language all of our own. <laughs> We have, we have a way of talking that's all of our own. So uh, we welcome the international church here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a safe haven for all the speckled and spotted. All the speckled and spotted fold from all over are welcome here. All the speckled and spotted watching by camera is welcome here. Because the strength is in the speckled and the spotted. Hallelujah. This is a safe haven for the Jews. It's a safe haven for them. They're all welcome here. Welcome here, Church International. Hallelujah. It's the time of the Jesus Revolution. All the, the pink, purple, haired, Nose, tongue, ear pierced. <laughs> Cowboy hats. Makes no difference. Hallelujah. You're welcome here. Amen. Amen. You come in one way, but you, you know, you may have all this kind of junk in your thinking and your mind. I'm not talking about your looks. I'm talking about what's in your heart. Who am I to speak of looks? <laughs> but my point being is this, the speckled and spotted of Jacob, you've lived every kind of life. You know everything around you, and God can use everything that you bring. Don't think that you're disposable because you're not. Hallelujah. I had a friend of mine one time who was an evangelist, he was an evangelist that nobody would let him preach in their church, hardly at all, because he might cuss while he preached. But he used to be a pickup man for the mafia, and he shot people's earlobes off for a living, tie them to a chair, shoot their earlobes off to collect the money they owed the family. And um, so when he got saved, he was forgiven much, so he loved extremely much. Hallelujah. And you know, God loves hippies like me. He does. And so I remember there was an incident he was talking about one day. He was down in Mexico, and... Some of the one percenter bike clubs were down there. And they pulled up on this old street, this string of them. So he just walked out in the middle of the street and he looked at them. And he, when they stopped at the stop sign, he just straddled the front fender of the leader, took hold of his handlebars. He said, you the head hog at the trough? <laughs> the guy just looked at him like, why aren't you dead? But he had no fear, and he was just the person to reach that person. Let me tell you how people are hurting, and they want help. There was a man used to work with us in ministry years ago before, back when people stayed away by the thousands. You know, people didn't, didn't know us know anything about us but we were still ministering back then 
And if I if I had to and had a garbage can and would have threw my Bible on top of it, I, I would have done it and preached. Makes no difference. Your call is your call, no matter where you go. And we had this, uh, we get we went to this behavioral health center, and we were ministering, and Robin and I would minister in song. It was just the two of us, and but I think then we had another couple singing with us, and. And uh, we would do dramas, take youth and do dramas. And then we gave an altar call. And at this behavioral health center, we're talking about kids that had probably done any, everything short of murder. And it's probably that if anyone knew it. And so when we gave the altar call, they started giving their heart to Jesus. Well, they started crawling across the ground coming to the altar. They were so grateful to know Jesus. They were just crawling across the grass. 16 got saved the first time we were ever there and four staff members. Well, they came to us after that and said, would you, would you put, so we've got great programs here. This was a Rama graduate that was there. It was over the whole behavioral health center. He said, you know, we've got great programs here, but we have no power in here. And nobody knows what to do when a devil manifests or something. They don't know what to do. He said, but I saw power today. Would you consider coming in? We went in, and I think it was like four years we established four units in the behavioral health care center of different age groups and put teachers in those units, teaching the gospel. Well, one of the young men that worked with us, that was over the teens down there he uh, he was so full of the word so full of the power of God he came back in there used to be a restaurant around here called Shoney's and he came in one night late one night he was I don't know if he came from the center or not but he walked in and there was a satanic priest would come in there at night and when he sat down, everybody on this side of the room got up and moved to this side of the room and left him alone over here. Well, Brian, he comes in. And he, he, he's the one that used to tell people how to talk country. They'd say, how do y'all talk country? He said, you got to emphasize the vowels. If you'll just emphasize the vowels, you'll arrive at Alabama talk. So he walks in and they were, there he was over there in his long black robe and his big pentagram, eating by himself, enjoying that he had this power over everybody. They were moved to the other side. Brian noticed he just picked up his plate and walked over there and sat down right beside him and pulled the chair out and sat down and just looked at him. The guy looked at him. He said, aren't you afraid of me? He said, no, no. He said, why not? He said, because what you believe is inferior to what I believe. And he had the man's attention. And he said and ministered to him the rest of that night. And the guy was really interested in his God because his God had already outdone him because he couldn't make him afraid. So people are out there hurting in all walks of life. Satanic priests that don't want to be satanic priests no more. <clears throat> I remember one of the head warlocks in California. Some of you may remember Jeff Finholt. He uh, was the, used to sing with Black Sabbath. He, I think White Snake was his band, if I remember that right. Jeff could sing, man. Oh, my goodness. He's in heaven now, but he could sing. And when he got saved, he met this warlock. And Jeff is just as real as rain. And so the guy finally looked at him and said this to him. He said, all I want is the truth. He said, if the truth is me getting down on my knees and drinking water like a dog out of a bucket, then that's what I'll do. I just want the truth. He didn't know what the truth was. And Jeff led him to Jesus. 
and he became a powerful voice for the Lord. People are hurting. All they want to know is the truth. And religion has gave them every reason not to, not to come to Jesus. Because they say, well, we don't like purple hair when we go to church. We don't believe in prophets when we go to church, especially those that wear long bulletproof coats. <laughs> Somebody accused me of that, you know. <laughs> Man, if a coat this size was bulletproof, I'd, I'd walk like down under. <laughs> I mean, it'd pull me down. It'd be too heavy. But if you'll just share what you know, listen, God is, let me tell you something I was telling uh, Mina and, and Yvonne last night. I think I was, we were talking it. Last night I said this to you. The Lord asked me one time, and this gets a lot of stares, and this will get a lot of attention, what I'm about to say. But the Lord told me one time, he said, I'm not nearly put out with things as you are. Well, that caught me off flat-footed, you know, as we say. And he said, I said, yeah. He said, yeah, I'm not nearly put out with things like you are. He said, what's the vilest word you can think of? I said, well, Lord, you know what it is. I don't like for anybody to use your name in vain. I've never liked that. He said, yeah, it bothers me too. He said, but it bothers you for a different reason than it bothers me. He said, it bothers you because you think somebody's cussing your mama. You think they're cussing me like they would your mama. You're just insulted. See? He said, but it bothers me because it's a lie. He said, I don't damn anybody. So I'm bothered by something for a whole different reason than he is. And he absolutely could care less if your hair was pink and purple and, and yellow and, and blue all at the same time. And if you had four nose rings hanging here and 16 earrings on your ear and you had one big old hoop in your belly button, he, he really don't, ain't bothered by all that. You know what he would tell you? Well, come on, let me show you how to use that for me. Come over here. I'm going to land you right in the middle of a whole group of big hoop belly button ringers. Because <laughs> they'll listen to you. And then somebody gets all bent out of shape. My God, he's got a tattoo. Really? Got a tattoo. That bothers you, huh? Yeah. Bothers me. Says mother right on his shirt. <laughs> Some people tattoo their name because they don't remember it. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just picking at you. Remember, I'm a wanderer. Rosie on my chest. You remember that song? I'm old enough to remember it. But anyway, let me give you a little insight to something. Jesus will come back on a white horse. Do you believe that? You believe that's a real horse he's coming back on? Well, I do. I do. Probably snorting fire, man. I mean, you know, can you imagine? Don't even mention his bridle. He's just riding him unbridled. Dear Lord. I tried to ride a two-year-old one time. Name was Blow Pop, and that's what it did. Like to blew my pop everywhere I went, man. I mean, he threw me off. <laughs> I just a boy to set me on there, you know. I grew up doing stuff, stupid stuff. But let me tell you this, and then I've got to give this word, and then I'm, I'm gonna turn it back over to whoever's waiting. Jesus is gonna return one day on that horse. And I'm going to be on one behind him. You didn't say amen so quick, but I will be. I'll be like Dwight Thompson. You know, he said, said Jesus is going to come back on that white horse. And Dwight said, I can ride. Well, I can too. 
said, I can ride, I can ride. He said, I'm going to be on, on a horse with him, and I'm going to get up so close to him, so close to him, so close to him, Jesus is going to look back and say, Robin, get on your own horse. I don't mean, <laughs> Because I want to be right up there looking. But there's something that's going to shock the religious world to the point it'll just knock them straight back. It says he has a name written on his thigh. It says King of Kings and Lord of Lords tattooed on his thigh. Now wait a minute. That ain't, everybody said, ha, oh, ha, oh, ha, oh. tattoo on the thigh. Yeah, but that ain't the biggie. You never even thought about his thighs exposed to the point you can see it. Oh, that just wrecks it all right there. How do you think you're seeing it? And then you're going to look up at him and say, Pull your robe to. When you do, them blazing eyes will just do like this. Never mind. Never mind. Because he ain't nearly put out with some things as you are. Oh, that'll draw fire. Seem like hello from me does. But I want you to know that he is... He's wanting you to come like you are. He wants you to be you, serving him. That's what he wants. And if there's baggage in your life, I can just assure you it ain't got nothing to do with your looks. Hallelujah. He ain't nearly put out with things as we are. Somebody hand me my notebook right there in front of my. Thank you, honey. Let's just lift our hands a moment. We're in a time of war. The Lord is longing to show his love to everyone who will receive it. But at the, in the time of war, the Lord began to speak to me this morning. This is October 15th, is this correct, right? 2023, it was somewhere between 9 and 9.15 this morning. The Lord says to my people in Iran, come out of her, says the Lord, for behold, it cometh. A shaking and a quaking, come out of her, says the Lord, lest you partake of her quaking. Behold, it cometh. How long shall I deal with you, Iran? I have appeared to your leader, and he had made an ultimate decision. But nay, he presumed to be wiser and more powerful than God. Not the God he worships, says the Lord. For if he had of, if he had of pretended to be wiser than the God of Mohammed, it would have been true. But you had to go and drag Israel into it. You had to, didn't you? Now you will cause your people to scatter. And you will cause them harm 
Hear what I say, says the Lord. Repent so that it will be less severe than it is. For the decision of Nineveh is upon the nations. Choose wisely. For Israel is not forsaken nor forgotten. For they will not be as in Babylonian captivity again. Like to Iraq, O Persia, see the fate that awaits you like Iraq. Wait while there is still time, for I will not protect you in this matter, even though you refuse to acknowledge me. For the music upon the hills of Iraq testifies against you, saying it is not fair that we should have reaped such a harvest and Iran goes free. Call it off, says the Lord, or you will be dependent upon another nation for the rest of your days, says the Lord. Time is drawing near, says the Lord. Time is drawing near, says the Lord, that this war will end. And a lot will be determined by what side you found yourself on. Whether this be a nation or an individual. I am not pleased with France. Change your strategy, says the Lord. And to all the nations, if you do not quit participating in this farce with the Ukraine, you will find yourself on the wrong side. You, all of you in this, have hurt enough of my people and killed the innocent. Your harvest is measured accordingly. Harari, you were not expecting this, says the Lord. You only talk peace so that you can continue your agenda. What a shame, for I had great plans for you, but you chose to use your gifts against the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hear the word of the Lord, for that is the word given to me this morning concerning this war, concerning what's happening in the world, for the decision of Nineveh is now resting upon nations. Even so, good is the word of the Lord. We esteem the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. In that day there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord at its border. And it will be for a sign and for a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they will cry to the Lord because of the oppressors and he will send them a savior and a mighty one and he will deliver them. Then the Lord will be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians will know the Lord in that day and will make sacrifice and offering. Yes, they will make a vow to the Lord and perform it. And the Lord will strike Egypt. He will strike it and heal it, for they will return to the Lord. He will be entreated by them and heal them. 
In that day there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian will come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians will serve with the...